Today on My Radar, we unlock the secrets of the Mega Flood, a month long storm system that batters California. Imagine 30 days and 30 nights of off and on rain, maybe snow in the mountains. Rainfall totals measured in feet in places like San Francisco and Sacramento, with tens of feet of snow falling in the Sierra Nevada. Instead of drought, the Golden State could face flooding. Landslides would wash out roads, isolating major population centers. Interstates would be impassable. Evacuations would be necessary. It's happened before, and it'll happen again. We'll tell you what we know. Hi, gang, I'm my radar meteorologist, Matt Capucci. Last week, scientists at the University of California, Los Angeles published a study that offered insight into future mega floods that could have serious impacts on California. The study, led by Professor Daniel Swain, used information about past mega flood events and climate simulations to project what future mega floods could do. Swain built on the work of other studies which employed tempestology and paleoclimatology. Big fancy words. They're terms that essentially describe looking for evidence of historical storms through things like sediment samples or isotopes of water. If you're looking for a storm, say, a thousand years ago in California, you can't go counting tree rings and you certainly can't pull up newspaper archives. And sorry, Siri's not going to help you either. But here's the thing. We know that big storms produce big rain that all collects in rivers and eventually washes out to sea. But that water also carries inland sediments to the ocean with it. Bigger storms with more rainfall will lead to a longer duration of increased river flow, meaning more sediment will be washed out and transported to the ocean. You may also have swifter flow rates which can transport larger pebbles or small gravel. That means that years with a major storm, like this so-called mega flood event, will feature a thick extra grainy sediment layer somewhere buried beneath everything that's accumulated since then. We call these overwash deposits. Now, ordinary ocean tides can disturb the layering of sediment, which results in an indiscernible and garbled signal. That's why if you're looking for overwash sediments, you have to use non-tidal bodies. Now, let's say you find an overwashed sediment. How old is it? There are a couple ways to sort out where a thicker sediment is. You can use sieving or the use of lasers or even x-rays. Now, here's the thing. Let's say we've extracted an overwashed sediment. How do we know how old it is? Chemical dating using isotopes, namely carbon-14, cesium-137, and lead-210. Sometimes a combination of all three. Using those tactics, experts were able to reconstruct a past climatology of storms dating back more than a thousand years. They found that the most recent mega flood in California took place in 1862, but that was well established with history. But mega floods on average occur every 150 to 200 years, or say five to seven times a century. So now we know these things do happen, they've happened before, they'll happen again. Let's discuss the setup. Obviously, it's not just one big rain cloud that sits in place for a month, but it's a surprisingly simple setup. If you've ever followed West Coast weather, you've likely heard of atmospheric rivers. They're just long filaments of juicy air. Some stretch 2,000 miles or more from the deep tropics near Hawaii. We sometimes colloquially refer to it as the Pineapple Express. Usually they form thanks to a squeeze play between two weather systems, ordinarily a counterclockwise spinning low off the northwest and a broader high pressure regime to the southeast. Here's what an atmospheric river looks like. You can see it's just a conveyor belt of rich tropical moisture, a highway in the sky, so to speak. There's a one through five scale that ranks atmospheric rivers based on their integrated water vapor transport, basically how much moisture is being fluxed through the sky. A typical atmospheric river may be 500 miles wide, but could be transporting 1 billion pounds of water vapor overhead at any given second. That comes out to more than 1,500 pounds of moisture streaming over every one meter cross section each and every second. That's crazy. Of course, it doesn't all come down instantaneously as rain. Most of it does not. It just sort of sits around between one kilometer and two kilometers altitude, although there are definitely some heavy rain showers and downpours. But when that air at the mid-level strikes something more than, say, a kilometer tall, so like 3,300 feet, it's forced upwards. That moisture then condenses into rain. At the high elevations, where it's cool enough, sometimes you get snow. Enter California. Both the coastal range and the Sierra Nevada help to focus precipitation. Near the coastal range, it's obviously more rain, with some showers in the Central Valley even at a lower elevation. Then the Sierra foothills see heavy rain, and the mountains get wicked snow. To get a mega flood event, we need a quasi-stationary trough or a dip in the jet stream over the Northeast Pacific. That could send a conga line of low pressure systems with atmospheric rivers into California. We'd also need a semi-stationary ridge of high pressure over the Southwest or the tropics, which would kind of act as a guardrail to steer these things into the West Coast. The flow at the mid-levels would need to be west-southwesterly. 
In that kind of environment, you would have a family of atmospheric rivers, one after another after another, all crashing into the California coastline. That would bring heavy rains consistently for perhaps up to four weeks. Swain's paper writes that some places like San Francisco and Sacramento could see more than two feet of rain. San Francisco currently averages 18.9 inches per year, Sacramento a little over 16 inches. So you can get why this sort of thing would be massive. He referred to the San Joaquin Valley becoming, quote, an inland sea, which, albeit likely a little bit exaggerated, still paints a clearer picture, showing you just how much rain could come down. In the mountains, tens of feet of snow could fall. The higher terrain would likely see widespread mudslides and landslides. And between that and the flooding, it's possible that every major interstate in California for a time could be impassable. And thanks to human-induced climate change, the mega floods of the future could be supercharged and moisture loaded. That's thanks to warmer air's increased capacity to hold water. For every degree Fahrenheit the air temperature increases, the air can hold about 4% more water. That doesn't sound like much, but if you're constantly replenishing an air mass that's a couple degrees warmer, suddenly rainfall totals can be 10 to 20% greater in the higher end events like this. Now, the odds of this happening any given year are like half a percent to 1%. That's pretty minimal. But it's a low probability high impact event and it will happen again. We can't predict what year it'll occur, but we do know it's much more likely to occur during an El Nino winter. That offers us the ability to say, hey, there's a slightly greater chance this year. But that's not overly helpful when slightly greater might be like 2% chance. Fortunately, we're able to spot the actual pattern that would give rise to a mega flood event like seven to 10 days in advance, maybe even more. In the meantime, scientists are working with emergency officials to ensure that there exists a plan for an event of this magnitude. Things like this are tough to visualize. In other words, we've never experienced anything like this in our lifetimes, but that doesn't mean we can't again. Now, we've never experienced anything like this in our lifetime, but you never want to base future actions off of historical precedent. That's a recipe for disaster. Fortunately, we don't see any signs of this in the near future, but you'd better believe that they crop up. My radar will be watching it every step of the way. In the meantime, we'll be back with a regular forecast tomorrow. Keep it tuned to My Radar on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and right here in the My Radar app. I'm my radar meteorologist, Matthew Capucci. Follow my radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download my radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.